And now some more fun with double integrals. Notice right here, there isn't a function. It's just saying dy dx. So that means that this is just finding area because we only have like inches times in inches. So that would be square inches. So this is actually finding an area. If there was a function right here, like sine of x or something like that, then we'd be finding volume. So the directions for this one are sketch the area that's being found and then actually find it. So this is saying we're integrating with respect to y first. So it's saying at one point y equals negative x, at another point y equals x squared. So y equals x squared, that's a parabola that looks like this. That's y equals x squared. And y equals negative x is a line that goes like this. It goes through the origin. So this is y equals negative x. And then x is going from 0 to 2. So from 0 to 2. So the area that we're actually finding is this area in here. And now to actually find it. So when you integrate dy, that just becomes y. And then evaluate that from negative x to x squared. And then later we'll do integration with respect to x. So substitute this in. So it's going to be x squared and then minus this. So x squared minus negative x. Now, if you remember from math, it's actually the end of math 3a. The way that you find the area between two functions, back in math 3a we only had x's and y's, we didn't have any z's. But anyway, the way you find the area between two functions is you take the top one minus the bottom one. And look at what that just did. It says the top one minus the bottom one. So we're finding area. So now I can go ahead and integrate with respect to x. This is going to become x cubed over 3. Two negatives makes a positive, And then x squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to 2. So then this is going to be 2 cubed is 8. So 8 thirds plus this will be 2 squared. So that's 4 divided by 2 is 2. And when you substitute a 0, it contributes 0. So keeping this as a fraction, let's see, this would be 6 thirds plus 8 is 14 thirds. So that would be the area that I shaded in pencil right here. Then for example number 2, okay, now for example 2. Do the double integral over the region R. And this just means over an area. So dy dx or dx dy, we're actually going to do two parts. We're going to do both. So this is just the parabola y equals x squared. And this is at a height of 4. And then we're going to be using this area right here, just the right side of it. So part A is use vertical cross sections. So that means that for this red area, I could find the area by using rectangles or at least estimate it. And the, the rectangles should be vertical like this. So I need to know down here, what does y equal? Well, down there it's touching the parabola, so that's y equals x squared. And at the top of this rectangle, that's y equals 4. So we'll integrate with respect to y first. Vertical means y, because the y goes up and down. And it's going to go from x squared at the bottom to 4 at the top. Then, what about x? So right here, x is equal to 0. And by the time you get to right there, 
Well, if you plug a four in for y and solve for x, x is going to be a two. So the x's go from zero to two. Then the antiderivative of this dy, that's just gonna be y. Evaluate that from x squared at the bottom to four at the top. And then you substitute the 4 minus, you substitute the x squared. And then this is what we need to integrate with respect to x. Now hopefully you remember back in Math 3a, the way that you find the area between two curves is you take the top one minus the bottom one and integrate. Back then we didn't have double integrals, we only had single integrals. So this would be how we would have done it in Math 3a. Take the top function minus the bottom function and integrate with respect to x. Okay, now to actually do it rather than just talk about it. So this is going to be 4x minus x cubed over 3. Evaluate that from 0 to 2. So that's going to equal an 8 minus, let's see, substitute a two, so this is eight thirds. And when you substitute a zero, it contributes nothing to the problem. So what would that be? 24 minus eight, it's going to be 16 thirds. Now for part B. For part B, change this word vertical to horizontal. So the picture is the same, got a nice parabola. This is at a height of four. We're just finding this area right here, but then use horizontal cross sections. So that means that my representative rectangle should go horizontally like this. So this is going from left to right, and it's the x values that go left to right. So over here, it's going to be x equals zero. Over here, it's touching the parabola. Well, previously I had used y equals x squared, that's the parabola. But right here, I need to know what x equals. So take the square root of both sides, and x is equal to the square root of y. So double integral, this time it's gonna be dx first, and then dy. And the lowest or the smallest that x gets is zero, and the biggest that it gets is the square root of y. And then for the y values, so they would go from zero up to four. And we should get the same answer. So I'm gonna to try to predict the future. I hope it works out. Did we get the same answer as last time? 16 thirds. Let's see. So integrate with respect to x, so this becomes just x evaluated from zero to the square root of y. And then substitute the limit, so this is gonna be the square root of y minus zero. So that's just the square root of y. And then, let's see, over here on some scratch paper, this is really y to the one half. So if you add one to the exponent, that's gonna be three halves, and then divide by three halves. So this is gonna equal y to the three halves, and then invert and multiply by two thirds, and then evaluate from zero to four. So that's gonna be two thirds of the number four raised to the three halves and then minus zero. So let's see, did we do it? So this means square root, square root of four is two. Then cube that, 
and 2 cubed is an 8. Then times 2 is 16. It's 16 thirds. Look, I predicted the future. So we get the same answer. Next, so those were finding area because it just said double integral and then it didn't have a function. For example, number three, this would be finding volume. Do a double integral and then the function is gonna be a plane. Three minus five X minus seven Y and then dy dx so this limit is going to go from 0 to 5 minus x, and this one from 0 to 15. So the directions are sketch the area that we're integrating over and then actually calculate the answer. So first of all, this is saying y equals 0. So that would be right there, or actually, y equals zero is the same thing as the x-axis. So it's actually this is y equals zero. This one, y equals five minus x. So that means go up to a height of five and then it's going to be a line with slope negative one. And then this part is saying x is going to go from 0 to 15. So from 0 out to, I don't really need to draw it to scale. That's pretty close. Okay. So since this part says that the y goes from 0 to the line, in this area, it has to go from 0 to the line. So that means it's going to be this area. And in here, it has to go from 0 to the line. So then it would have to be this area. So it's like two little triangles. Now actually integrate. So integrating with respect to y means this is going to become 3y. The 5x is held constant, so the antiderivative would be 5x times y, and then minus 7y squared over 2. And then that gets evaluated from 0 to 5 minus x. So for all of these y's, substitute 5 minus x. So there's a 3. Whoops, I just meant to say 3. 3 times 5 minus x minus 5x times 5 minus x minus 7 halves and then 5 minus x gets squared. And then all of that we need to integrate from 0 to 5. So looks like I've got some algebra to do. So this is going to be 15 minus 3x. This will be negative 25x and then plus 5x squared, negative times negative. And then this will be, oh, I guess I need to square this first. So negative 7 halves and then 25, the middle term would be negative 10x, and then square a negative x, that's positive x squared. And then combine like terms. So let's see, there's negative 7 halves x squared plus 5. negative seven halves 
plus 5. That's not right. I hit the wrong button. Negative 7 halves plus 5 is 3 halves. Now what about the x's? So right here, there's negative 28x. And then when you multiply here, it's going to be positive. That would be a 5. So that means that it's 7 times 5. There's 35x's. 35 minus 25 will be 10 of them. Minus 3 is 7 of them. There's 7x's. And then for the constant, there would be a 15 and then minus. There would be 15 minus 7 halves times 25. Negative 145 over 2. All right, now that we've done the hard part, the algebra, now we can do the easy part, the calculus. So this will be x to the 3 over 3. When you divide by 3, it's going to cancel that one. So it's going to leave 1 half x to the 3 plus 7x squared over 2, then minus 145 over 2 times x. Evaluate that from 0 to 15. And right now, I'm very grateful for the 0. So we have 1 half 15 cubed minus 7 halves, whoops, plus, plus 7 halves, 15 squared, and then minus a 145 over 2 times 15. And then we'll be done with that one. So we have 1 half times 15 raised to the 3 plus 7 halves, 15 is squared, minus 145 divided by 2 times a 15. 1387.5. Perseverance pays off. Okay, then on to the next example, example number 4. Find the volume between z equals 9 minus x squared minus y squared and the triangle enclosed by these lines, y equals x x equals 0, and x plus y equals 5. So find the volume just means we're going to be integrating this function. And then this is telling us how to set up the limits. So first, I want to graph that. So y equals x is a line that's going like this. x equals 0 is the y-axis, and then this means that if you have y equals 5, then x would equal 0. And if you have x equals 5, then y would equal 0. So that is a line that's going like this. And it's supposed to be a triangle that's enclosed by those lines. So it's talking about this triangle right here. Now, how do we set up the integral? Do we go dy dx or do we go dx dy? Well, I could at least start writing down, make it a double integral. We're going to be integrating 9 minus x squared minus y squared. And then d what? Well, with a picture like this, I definitely want to put the representative rectangle vertically. Because if I do it horizontal, then sometimes it's going to be hitting this bottom line. And as you move up, it's then going to hit the top line. So you would then have to divide it right here and do two of these integrals. 
I would rather just do one integral. So I'm going to put it like this. There's my representative rectangle, which means that we need to do y first and then x. So if this is vertical, y goes first. So at the bottom, it's hitting this line, and this is the line y equals x. And right here, it's hitting this line, which means it's y equals 5 minus x. So at the bottom, it's x. Here, it's 5 minus x. And then x would go from 0 to that point right there. So that's where this line and this line meet. So what I could do is take the y equals x, plug it in right there. It's going to say x plus x equals 5. 2x equals 5. So x equals 5 halves. So x is going from 0 to 5 halves. Now, <clears throat> now integrate with respect to y. So the 9 will become 9 times y. The x squared will become x squared times y. And the y squared will become y cubed over 3. And then evaluate that from x to 5 minus x. Next, substitute 5 minus x. So there's 9 times 5 minus x. There's minus x squared times 5 minus x. Oops. 5 minus x. And there's y cubed, so that's going to be 5 minus x cubed over 3. And then minus, now put an x in for all those y's. So 9x minus x, so I'm right here, x squared times x is x cubed. And then minus put an x right here, so that's x cubed over 3. So, what to do with the algebra? So this one, I can multiply easily. This one, I can. This one, to be honest, I don't feel like cubing it. I think I'm just going to leave it like that and integrate it. The other terms, I'm going to combine those. So this would be 45 minus 9x minus 5x squared. And then this one and this one will be plus x cubed. And this one, I'm just going to leave it. I'm just going to integrate it the way that it is. And then we would have minus 9x. And then this would be one, negative 1 and a third or negative 4 thirds x cubed. And then there's just still a little bit more algebra, combine like terms. So let's see, there's an x cubed minus 4 thirds x cubed. That would leave negative 1 third x cubed. And as far as x squares, there's only this one minus 5x squared. As far as the x's, that would be negative 18x. And as far as the constants, there's only a 45. And then there's this term that I didn't feel like multiplying out. And then we can integrate with respect to x. So this will be negative. 
And this is going to be x to the 4 over 4, which makes this negative 1 12th x to the 4, minus 5 x to the 3 over 3. This will be x to the 2 over 2, so that's going to cut the 18 in half. And then a 45x. And then for this one, I could basically look at it as if it was u raised to the third. So that means it's going to be the same thing, raised to the fourth divided by four. Then the only thing is the chain rule. The derivative of the inside is a negative one, so I should actually be dividing by a negative one. So that's going to change this into a positive and then evaluate from zero to five halves. And once again, I'm grateful for having a zero because that's going to eliminate a lot of our work. So negative one twelfth and then five halves to the fourth minus five thirds and then 5 halves to the third minus 9 and then 5 halves is squared and then 45 times 5 halves and then plus how much is 5 minus 5 halves? Well 5 halves is 2.5 so 5 minus 2.5 is 2.5 or in other words 5 halves to the 4th over 12. Now when you put the 0, that's going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, and this will be 5 minus 0. So it still leaves 5 to the 4th over 12. So minus 5 to the 4th over 12. Okay, now we just need to get the final answer. So to save me a little bit of time, I'm going to take five halves and then store it. If you haven't done this before, that's what this is. Store it as x. Now every time I use an x, it's going to plug in a 2.5 or the five halves. So negative one twelfth and then x is raised to the fourth and it will plug in the five halves for me. Then minus 5 thirds, x is raised to the third, minus 9, and then 5 halves is squared, plus 45 times the 5 halves, plus the 5 halves is raised to the fourth, divided by 12. Oops, that's not divided, that's divided. And then minus 5 raised to the 4th, and that's divided by 12. So the final answer is 21, negative 21.875. All right. There's one other one that I wanted to do. This video's already gotten sort of long, but I'll just do this real quick. What's the double integral of one over x plus y? If it goes from zero to x minus one, and then from one to two. So we're integrating with respect to y, so that's basically like integrating 1 over y. That's going to be the natural log. So it's going to be the natural log of x plus y evaluated from 0 to x minus 1. Technically this is supposed to be the absolute value, but just keep in mind you can't take natural log of a negative, so technically that should have been absolute value. I don't think it's going to happen in this case, but in other cases, you would need to put absolute value to get rid of negatives. All right, so substitute this for y. So that means it's going to say x plus x minus 1. 
So that'll be natural log of 2x minus 1. Then when you substitute 0 for y, it's just going to leave natural log of x. And then we need to integrate that with respect to x. And here's how come I wanted to do this one, even though the video is getting sort of long. When you integrate the natural log of x, do you remember from Math 3B how to integrate the natural log of x? So you can use integration by parts. And when you do, you're going to get x natural log of x minus x. So in Math 3B, there are quite a few integrals that show up often, and you don't want to have to redo them every time. This is one of them that when I teach Math 3B, I emphasize it's better if you just memorize this one. For natural log of x, it's going to be x natural log of x minus x. Now for this one, it's not as simple as just an x. That one, I could do that formula. This one, I should probably use u substitution. So let u equal the 2x minus 1. The derivative of that would be 2 times dx. We don't have a 2 out here, so that means you have to multiply by 1 half. So this one would become integrate 1 half natural log of u du. And then this one would just be integrate natural log of x dx. I'll put the limits back in just a moment when I'm finished with this u substitution. So this one is going to be 1 half. And then the formula is x natural log of x minus x. So in this case, it's going to be u natural log of u minus u. And then this one will become x natural log of x minus x. So now replace the u with 2x minus 1. So this one is 1 half times 2x minus 1. And then natural log of 2x minus 1. And then minus a 2x minus 1. And then over here, I just need to distribute the negative. Minus x natural log of x, and then minus minus will be plus x. And then evaluate that from 1 to 2. So when you substitute the 2, this is going to be 4 minus 1, so that's 3. So there's 1 half times 3. And then this will be natural log of 3. And then this will say minus a 3. And then substitute the 2. So then it's minus 2 natural log of 2 plus a 2. Then substitute the 1. So minus, now go back to the beginning, substitute a 1. So this will be 2 minus 1. So that just leaves the half. This will be 2 minus 1, so that means it's natural log of 1, which equals 0. This will be 2 minus 1, so that means minus a 1. And then for this part, it's going to be minus 1 natural log of 1 plus 1. And Right here I said minus, but I forgot to put that it's minus all of this. Okay, so what's the final answer? So to begin with, there is 3 halves, natural log of 3 minus 3, minus 2, natural log of 2 plus 2, except I need a parenthesis and then say plus 2. And then natural log of 1 is 0, so that's gone. That one's gone. That's where the red pen comes in. This is 0. This is 0. And then this would be a negative 1 and a positive 1, so they are actually going to cancel each other out also. So actually, after that 2, 
we're done. So the final answer is negative 0.738.